Welcome class, I'm here to give you a better definition about those labels, Chicano, Hispanic, or Latino. Even though the YouTube video does a good job in showing you how confused people are and they don't even know how to use these labels, but I'm going to start with Latino. And Latino really dates back to colonial times. You have all these criollos, which is the son and daughters of the Spanish, born in the Americas, looking for an identity. But guess what? These people were very wealthy, and their sons and daughters, the criollos, ended up traveling back to Europe. Most of them they were getting their education in France, because back then, France was the educational mecca of the world. So while these criollos are having a good time in Europe, at the same time, they are very proud of the Latino roots, looking into what they have from Spain, from France, from Italy, Portugal, all these Latino countries, because all come from the Latin roots, and that's why you have the so-called Roman languages. They ended up embracing that part of Europe and say, you know what, um, we're Latinos, but we are from the Americas. And they ended up blending the two, the two of terms. So Latino, Arab with Americans, ended up being Latino Americano or Latin Americans. And the Criollos did a good thing about sort of giving credit to the indigenous people, but did not give any credit to the blacks. So that was kind of horrible doing it. Now, with Chicano, I uploaded a little video. Um, talks about Aztlán, La Tierra Mía, my homeland. And during the civil rights movement, once again, Chicanos did not like the label of Hispanics. So, La Tierra Mía, my homeland, Aztlán. If you ever go to Chicano Park, you're going to see a big mural and it has the, the Aztlán. And what a lot of the historians and even anthropologists, they think that maybe at one point the Mexica and the Aztec tribes left the Southwest, somewhere in the Southwest. Some wanted to think it's the Four Corners, which is Utah, you have Arizona, you have Colorado, and you have New Mexico. So somewhere in those four states, the four corners of the U.S., they think that's where the Aztecs left, and the Mexicas. And when I talk about the Aztecs, the Aztecs were seven families, but one of those families went by the name of the Mexicas, and the Mexicas traveled all the way south and landed. Not that they took a plane, but they walked till they got to... Mexico City, which is late as Coco, and they settled and they built the Nostitlan. Now the Chicanos use this. They use the myth, that migration, to let the Americans who were using labels back then, like the Hispanic, for example, hey, you know what, we are native from this land. We're native from the Americas. So why don't we use the word Mexica, which is Chica and Ano from American, and let's blend it, Chicano. And it's sort of, um, they embrace the, the legend to solidify the roots that they have to this country. And that's where Chicano comes from. Hispanic is a little bit easier because Hispanic comes out of the census in the 1970s. The U.S. wanted to group everyone under Hispanics. Everyone that spoke Spanish, okay, well, they're Hispanic. But if you really look it up, the, the term Hispanic in the Spanish dictionary or really look into the etymology of it, you are going to learn that Hispanic means that your mom and that your main ancestors come from the Iberian Peninsula, but that's not really the case. If you happen to be a Guatemalan, Quiche, or Cachiquel indigenous person, then you cannot call yourself Hispanic. The same if you happen to have um, Afro descent. Let's say you're Afro-Cuban, Afro-Colombian, and you're in the U.S., so are you really Hispanic? So, once again, those labels tend to... Um, to isolate, segregate, and that's why I really don't like them. So that's a little bit of what I think about these labels. Um, maybe you want to look for another label, I don't know. But labels tend to divide, and I really don't like that. And that's all for today, guys. Stay tuned. Bye.